Hi, it's Peg with two Old Crows Mixed Media. And in video one, we completed the backbone of our journal or essentially created the cover. So in this video, what we are gonna do is just decorate that cover to make it a little more palatable and add that window with the door type opening and get that to open and shut and latch and reveal the picture that we have chosen. So the first thing I would like to start with is adding some texture paste to both the outside cover of the journal. Um, you can see that I am using a stencil that has a couple of different patterns on it. In the upper right, you'll see a brick type pattern, which I'm gonna be putting on the outside edge, edges of the journal. And this pattern here I'm utilizing for the door. I'm going to choose to go ahead and smear the bottom of that to make that look like a kick plate on a door and then we'll paint that later to make it look more uh, door appropriate. What I would like to do next is we'll set that aside and let that dry. We have the um, texture put on the outside cover of the journal. You can see it here in different areas. And now I'm going to fuss with the image just a little bit to give it a bit more interest when you open the door on that journal. So I have the pictures of the picture of the two women. I'm going to add some flowers along the right side of it. And I have chosen to add a butterfly which I am inking up that I'm going to put in the upper left corner of it to you know, still reveal the faces of the women. And then because this journal is for myself, what I have done is chosen um, an E and I'm going to put it on top of this little piece of doily, the word me and the letter E. And that's kind of um, personal to me. My name is spelled Peggy with an E instead of a Y. So I'm putting me with an E right there in the lower left hand corner. And then be ourselves is the other word that I have chosen. So I'm just gonna fuss with the picture a bit, get the pieces decoupaged on, and then once it dries, take the Stabilo um, all pencil and add some shadow to the ephemera that I added and some detail to the picture. And then we'll just set that aside and, and work with that later. Now what I have chosen to do, um, now that I've sized up the picture and it, it looks good through the window, I'm going to add some black gesso to the foundation that we've created. And remember we coated everything or coated the outside with uh, book pages just to add that additional foundation and a little bit of texture or um, you know, kind of creating those seams as texture with that paper in the way that we decoupage that on during video one. So now I just want to cover that with the black gesso and um, we'll set that aside and allow that to dry. Then I'm going to come back with the mineral colored ink which is a um, very light, um, it's a chalk paint and it's a very light beigey color with, with um, you know, kind of a cement type color. You can see it here. Um, I dropped the video somewhere, lost the video of pulling that bottle of mineral chalk paint out, but that is what I used to create that color. And now that that is dry, I'm taking a piece of coarse sandpaper 
and I am just going to work over the front cover of that book with the sandpaper um, and getting um, a good strong definition in where I have put the texture paste to create the brick look. And remember, in video one we talked about this being or kind of representing the home that these two women might have lived in, that old brownstone or brick row house, um, you know, with the nice little gardens behind and so forth, and, and it, just looking for that um, rustic, grungy type image. So now that I have that sounded down the way I like, and, and as I said, I like that the brick look. So I'm going to take where that texture paste is and just dry brush that. I'm just putting a tiny bit of red on my, my brush and, and I'm keeping it not real fluid, but um, enough to get that red color on, on the bricks. I have painted over this door with the black gesso and now I'm going to sand that down and once I have that texture paste showing I'm going to give it a coat of red but leave the bottom of it in in the black because remember we want that to look like a kick plate. So we'll set that aside to dry and bring it back in and take that coarse sandpaper and sand it down once again. Okay, now we have everything sanded and it's it's looking pretty good. The the color is coming out the way I want it. So I picked up the uh, Stabilo All pencil and I am just going to go in around the bricks and kind of put a shadow into each one of those. And just a, a little more definition taking the Stabilo and going around the inside or the and the outside of that window. And of course I'm gonna, going to um, go around the outside edges of the entire journal. So I think, I think it's looking good. I'm happy with it. Going to get the door into uh, a little more of a rustic um, kind of a faded red door and and I'm pretty happy with the way that looks as well. So we'll be hinging that onto the front and now you know I want to add some greenery just like there's some weeds and flowers and different things growing up around the outside of that house is kind of the look I was going for so I've taken a fern green um, archival ink and I have a stamp that um, I am using and I'm stamping just around the bottom edge all the way around the journal. And everything I'm using is linked below. Um, the texture paste that I used, I made myself the recipe for that. The video with the recipe for that is linked below as well. And now I'm pulling out the hinges that I have purchased um, off Amazon for the door. And again, the link to purchase those is below. And they're just little rustic brassy looking hinges and a closure that come with these little tiny screws that screw very easily with um, a, a very small Phillips screwdriver into that that cardboard. So once I got those screwed in, the <laughs> screw was a little bit longer than the cardstock that I utilized to create this book. So I have cut just a little strip of um, the coffee carton or the coffee, you know, we used a K-cup box mm. to create this this book that was a card stock essentially or the cardboard that we used. So I cut a little piece of that and um, took some uh, Fabri-Tac and glued that along the back uh, over the top of those screws to keep those from being uh, pokey <laughs> if you will and then just um, we'll paint it black with the with the gesso to, to 
but it worked out fine. You know, as as always, when you when you create something, you always have to overcome some sort of issue. And now I'm just taking the issue, the not the issue. I'm taking the gesso and going around the outside edge of of the book um, just to make sure when we put the um, paper on the inside that we don't have any cardboard or craft paper showing. So we're just going to paint around the outer rim. Okay, and now it's time to get the picture ready to to be glued in. And I have cut um, another piece of cardboard or cardstock, cereal box, um, whatever you want to call it, to the size of the picture and glued that picture um, to that just to give it a little bit more structure. And I have measured and am cutting acetate to put over the top of it. So that looks like a true little window and kind of protects that picture from uh, wear and tear. So now I'm just going to take the um, glitter glue and go along the outside edges of that acetate and press that down on the top of that picture. And we have everything glued together now. We'll let that dry a bit and then we will go ahead and glue that into the journal so that it will appear when you open that door. Not real sure what I'm fussing with off screen right now. But once it is all together, we'll get it glued in. Yeah, finally, brought the glue out, get it glued in. And then I'm going to get ready to cut and cover the inside of the journal with some paper. But before I do that, I think I'm going to Kind of touch up the black here on the inside door. Test my closure to make sure that door opens and closes real well. Wipe off any excess glue and you should be good to go. Yeah, the door closes nice. It looks good. Now I've pulled out some um, tea stained cheesecloth and that is what I am going to do to kind of decorate up that spine. There's there's two ways to do that. This um, and, and I chose to do it first. Um, sometimes I wait until I bind the signatures in and then put that in to cover up my um, twine or linen or thread or whatever I've used to bind my signatures in. But I chose to put it on first this time. And I, I kind of wanted this real grungy looking journal, so I thought that those um, bindings would look good on the outside edge of that, and I am happy with that. So if you are wanting to hide your binding strings, I would wait and do this after you put the signatures in, but if you're going for the same type of look that I went for, I'd go ahead and do it now. So I'm just kind of trimming up that cheesecloth and pulling some of the threads on the side to fray it and uh, have it have that old frayed, well-loved book type of look. Mm. 
Okay. So now I've chosen um, a, just a scrapbooking paper to use on the inside of the journal and I'm just measuring it and just kind of eyeballing it and marking it a little bit and I'm going to cut it down to size and and round off the um, corners ink it up and glue it into place and that will cover the back of that door And just inking up the edges and, and getting it ready to glue down. And I'm going to use, um, I believe, the Fabri-Tec, yes, the Fabri-Tec glue to just really secure this scrapbook paper to the inside of my journal. And I will um, allow that to dry, set it aside, and then... Uh, Come back in with another piece of cheesecloth down the uh, center to cover the inside of the spine. Now I'm just taking my Stabilo pencil and going around the, the edge to cover up any place that, that the uh, black gesso might have shown a little, you know, crack or breakthrough of that brown craft paper. And here is the cheesecloth for the inside of the spine. And I am going to just cut that to size and glue that down with a fabric check glue. And what what I am doing here and what the camera didn't really pick up on, but I didn't want to throw this out because I think it did add a lot to the overall journal, is I had uh, the vintage photo spray ink and I just hit the outside back cover with a couple of shots of that. And here you have the finished looking piece. This is the outside of that journal. And when you open the door, it reveals the two women talking with the little ephemera that we put around the outside edges. And I think the finished piece turned out really nice. I am real happy with the journal. It was relatively easy to put together. And I thank you for joining me this far in the journal journey. So... If you liked what you saw, please subscribe, share, and hit that bell so you'll be notified when we upload weekly.